the chosen messenger a priest's son. Ten locutions to the world from Mary from January 18 to 27, 2015. The first locution from Mary on January 18. No time for delays. The darkness grows. I'll lead you step by step into my light, so the darkness does not overwhelm you. As the world's lights are extinguished, people will see the false confidence they placed in the world's power to save them. Only one true light and only one path to world peace will exist. Long before the darkness descends, people must know of my special light. Few, very few, will be able to discover this light at the last minute because fear and confusion will grip their hearts and cloud their minds. Right now, I speak. Right now, I teach. Right now, I reveal. You also must listen, learn and accept my words in faith. If you have abandoned your religious practices, return to them. If you have wandered into sin, repent and go to confession. If you have made wrong decisions and have taken the wrong road, turn around and go back. Regain what you have lost. Claim again what you have set aside. This is not the work of one day but the task must be completed as quickly as possible. Do not delay. Your steps will prepare you for greater gifts of inner peace that will serve you well when the darkness comes. On this path of conversion, I will send people who will help you. Join your heart with them. You will need one another. I will provide all you need at every step, but I cannot make your decision. You alone can decide. The second locution from Mary on January 19, a chosen son. Ants. The world has no chance without my path. The world will stumble and fall. Even worse, they will find no direction and enter into a pit of no return. The present moment is a period of time like none other. Everyone begins to catch a glimpse and to see this on the horizon. Yet, I do not preach gloom and doom. I preach about light and a safe path. I speak of the darkness so that when the events happen, you will believe my voice that a safe path does exist. Do not place your trust in false leaders. Do not trust leaders who claim to know the path. As the darkness grows, I will raise up my leader, stamped with all my credentials, anointed with the Holy Spirit, totally one with me as a special son always faithful to my name, always anxious for my glory. He will deliver my words. Even now, I am doing a special work in his heart. I am clothing him in the sun. This is the special son of Fatima. I have stamped Fatima on his heart and this will be the sign by which you know that this is my son whom I have chosen so the whole world will find my path. All will be clear. All will be external. The guidance will be given every day. I will teach him all the strategies of the evil one. I will make his voice ring out over the whole world. You will know him by this one sign. He will be my priest's son who has Fatima engraved on his heart and whose name is engraved on my heart. The path will be safe. Just listen to him. The third locution from Mary on January 20, Step Store of the Path. Great anxieties will grow as the problems increase. New leaders are elected but little changes. While the forces of darkness seem inevitable I speak about a tiny path. All must search for this path and when they find it, they will have hope. This path is revealed through faith. Yet, many have abandoned their faith, leaving the church that nourished their parents. They must return. This is the first step. Secondly, they must allow my light to pierce their hearts. Their lifestyles are not in accord with my desires. I promise to help everyone who makes the least efforts. Finally, they must nourish this spirit. They must feed upon the Eucharist, confession, the rosary and some time each day for prayer. I have presented a full schedule able to be adapted by everyone who reads these locutions. The fourth locution from Mary on January 21, the messenger of light. I foresee everything. 
I see the goals of the evil one and the path upon which he has led the world. I see the great darkness that he plans and the steps he will lead everyone to take. This includes the terrorists, the world leaders, the rich who control the world's wealth and all who will shape the events. All of his darkness and hiddenness is as clear as day. Nothing is hidden from my eyes. The Father has placed heavenly wisdom in my heart, just as he placed his Son in my womb. He has revealed to me his plan of light for the coming darkness. However, he has allowed me to choose my messenger of light, and about this priest's son I must speak so that my words are not vague or uncertain. In this extreme moment of darkness, I would not leave this indispensable light to come about in a confused way, nor to even be questioned. I must give humanity two gifts so everyone receives light. The first gift is a definite person, someone who is gentle and can be trusted, upon whom the Spirit of the Lord will rest. I will leave no doubt. I will send signs. These will be Fatima signs that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I will give him the strength of King David, the wisdom of Solomon and the light of the great prophets. I will share with him my old task as the second John the Baptist. I will reveal everything to him and he will reveal all to the world. All that the evil one does and plans to do I will make known to him. He will be my constant and daily voice. I will give him power to work signs and wonders, but especially I will make him a light to the nations. In him, my church will shine forth to the world and all will see what I have done. The Sixth Locution from Mary on January 23 the 21st century opportunity. A speaker can only imagine the effects of his words upon his listeners, but I see every heart and I know exactly what is happening through my words. I speak of events and of roads that lead to darkness. I do not speak to multiply anxieties but to light up my road of peace. By my words, I breathe upon the world just as Jesus breathed upon his apostles when he said, receive the Holy Spirit. My words are the breath of God, this is the Father's gift to me, being poured forth like a new creation, restoring what is broken and encouraging those who are discouraged. As the events continue, for they have already begun, I will constantly breathe upon the whole world. Wherever I breathe, life will begin anew. Wherever I breathe, light will overcome the darkness. All must believe. The darkness is new. The evil is new. The destructive forces are new. Should not God's powers also be new? This is the new breath of God which the Father has placed in my heart. I will breathe everywhere, but I must be invited. If I am not invited, 2015 will hold only these events of destruction. If I am invited, there will be a fresh and powerful breath of new life. The Sixth Locution from Mary on January 23, the 21st Century Opportunity. When dark clouds gather, all know that rain will soon fall. There are certainly dark clouds on the horizon which all can see. What rain will fall and when will the sun shine? I will speak clearly. There will be two great clouds terrorism and economic collapses. The reign of terrorism has already begun but this is just the beginning rain. Much larger and still darker clouds will release their rains. This will be the scene as 2016 begins. The economic clouds are present but not seen by all. They will begin to pour out their rain later in the year. However, the economic collapses, small at first, will touch many more lives than the acts of terrorism. These evils will not come from outside forces. They have been built into the economic systems by world leaders. As such, they will be more systemic, closer to the mainstream and less vulnerable to possible solutions. My words only reveal the beginnings. If these are the 2015 events, what will happen in 2016 and 2017? leading up to the 100th anniversary of October 13, 1917. 
before that date of October 13, 2017, I will have lifted up my beloved priest son. Through him, I will offer the people of the 21st century a second opportunity to accept the Fatima gift. Even though I sent my three little children, especially Lucy, as the 20th century messengers, the people of that century did not open the Fatima gift and the graces were withheld. I promise the world, so very soon, a second opportunity. Although I must speak of the clouds of terrorism and economic collapses, I also speak of the Fatima gift. I would not leave my children without hope. The seventh locution from Mary on January 24, Heaven's New Snowfall. My blessings are like snow falling on the ground, covering every part with a heavenly beauty. Snow is a twofold image of heaven, because it falls from the sky and of blessings, because it covers everything in a strange beauty, pleasing to the eye. No one can command the snow. No one can say to the snow come and no one can command, stop. All is beyond man's powers, even his most sophisticated inventions. So it will be when I raise up my priest's son to whom I have given the Fatima gift. No power in heaven or earth will stop the blessings. No one will be able to cover them over. Just as everyone sees the snow falling, so all will see the heavenly blessings of Fatima. Thousands witness the sun dancing in the sky, but millions will see the new snow of Fatima falling. That is why the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart must be public, known to all the world and to the Church. Let it be made with the greatest of faith, by everyone. All must believe. All must be taught the promises. The whole Church, with one mind and heart, filled with the greatest hope in the midst of the great darkness, must turn to heaven. After that, the snow will begin to fall and new hope will begin to live in people's hearts. The Eighth Locution from Mary on January 25, The Watchman on the Mountain Events unfold, one leading to another. Only looking back can the series of events be understood, seen as either important or unimportant. I see quite differently. I see the future and the events which lie ahead, one opening out into the next. Like a watchman stationed high upon the mountain, I can see what no one else sees. From this wisdom, I speak as no one else can speak. Yet, who turns to me? Who comes to the Queen of the Universe and seeks my wisdom? I do not wait for an invitation. I boldly speak. Let my words convince you. The time of difficulties has begun. At first, it will seem as if they are conquered. New steps are taken to counter the terrorists. New steps are taken to ease the economic difficulties. People believe that these responses will turn the tide, but the evils are too deeply embedded and the economic systems are too weak in too many places. The West has neither the resources nor the will to adequately respond because the fire of faith has been extinguished. The great zeal for God and for others has been lost. The great leaders who could preach across Europe like St. Bernard, St. Francis, St. Dominic and St. Ignatius are no more. The words that go forth are political and cunning, unable to raise man's heart to the Heavenly Father who alone can reverse the future series of events. Tell me, what world leader speaks of God? Who seriously invokes Jesus? These names are never heard, as if they were relics of the past. Mankind will just continue this hopeless path until I raise up him to whom all the nations will listen. The Ninth Locution from Mary on January 26, Raising Up Her Priest's Son In my heart, I hold my priest's son whom I have mentioned many times. He will be the great sign, so easy to see. I will raise him up in extraordinary ways. This will be an even greater sign. I will clothe him with the son of Fatima and give great power and wisdom to his words. He will bless the nations with my Fatima gift. He will teach and explain, so the whole world knows exactly what I want to do. The powers of darkness have already come against him, but, 
as the mother of God, I kept him safe and delivered him from the trial. Now, I prepare him. He knows that the time is very close for him to come onto the world scene. He will not hesitate because he will be totally prepared, as if he had been there for years. For him, these destructive events are signs which I had revealed to him years ago. All of these events had to take place and the world had to be cast into darkness before I could raise him up. At the moment of great despair, suddenly I will raise him up so all will know that I have not abandoned the world but have prepared for this dark moment. How quickly I bring him on the scene depends upon the course of events. Each person is free. All make their decisions, world leaders and popes, terrorists and economists. Although world events are shaped by many hands, I, alone, will choose exactly when and how I will raise up my priest's son. I speak these words so clearly now so that when this happens, the great sign of my love in doing this is full and abundant. The Tenth Locution from Mary on January 27, The Person with the Key All the world has become a battlefield, where the story of humanity is played out. No longer a time of peace or even a place of peace. All are drawn into the conflict. All is interconnected. Nothing stands alone and self-sufficient. Such has been the plan of the evil one who wants to snatch the whole world. All the events are connected. All have their place in his scheme. He plants his people in high places and seemingly lowly positions. He stirs hearts to disrupt and then uses their actions to prepare for those who will follow. He can use only sinful hearts. His plans always depend on one foundation the selfishness embedded in the human heart. World leaders overlook this. They have no plans to deal with human anger or human greed. Their paper solutions soon are in shreds. The walls they build crumble before the powers of human selfishness which destroys human life. The battle rages everywhere and man is completely helpless to restore peace or to avoid calamities. All evil begins in the human heart and flows out from within, going forth like a mighty river to flood the nations. Another river exists which could swallow up all of these evils in a single moment. The river has a name, Jesus and he dwells in my immaculate heart. Oh, when will this river be released? When will I be able to raise up the one to whom I have given the key? This is the only hope for humanity in this 21st century.